much whimsical in here. I love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is my favorite room. This is where I come to hide. <laughs> <laughs> what are like some of the products you would recommend? Since, for example, I'm gonna get married in a humid, windy climate mm -hmm. uh, to keep my hair just last all day. Mm -hmm. What product? So. For the summer especially, I use like a dry wax spray, which is actually what's this. I'm spraying this on your hair. It just keeps all the frizz like really tame, but it doesn't make the hair wet or sticky. Okay. Um, so I tend to go for the bedhead one because I think it's like the nicest feel. Um, it's very smoothing and it smells delicious. Oh my god, smell. I love the smell. I know, it's so nice. Um, so I, I'll always use like a dry wax spray before I start curling because then the heat helps mend all the like frizz together and frizz obviously comes out more in humidity so yeah. I tend to use it all year but depending on the hair type I won't like use it as much in the winter as I do in in the summer um, and then obviously you're just going to want like a stronger hold hairspray so I'm using the bed head again that um, it's an extra strong hold but again it doesn't make it crunchy you're not meant to like just spray it all over the head I just use it like sporadically nice um, okay so bed head is, sounds like your your favorite yeah, I just, I've tried a lot of stuff and I just really like it and I I always check in with my brides like after their wedding and be like, how did everything hold up just to make sure my products are like doing their job. Oh. And it's like, oh, I had to wash it out like three days later, it stayed, it didn't go anywhere. So, wow. you know, once you find something that works, you just, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Oh, that's really good logic. Yeah. So are you doing bridesmaids too or just the bride? Yeah, I'll do bridesmaids as well. Because I, I tend to work on the faster side, like I don't have a, I don't know, I've just always been a bit more like, I guess my adrenaline like kicks in on the wedding morning, I don't mm. know when I just get it, everything done. So I actually do like bigger parties alone a lot of the time. Really? How big is the biggest? By myself, I've done 14. <gasps> um, and saying that, I won't do that if they have like a super early finish time and I'd never like risk it. But there was a party once and she was like, yeah, we're going to be in the bridal suite from like 8 a.m. We don't have to be done till 3, so whatever, I'll just stay all day and do everyone. But sometimes like, um, sometimes bridesmaids have shoulder length thin hair and they want a half up and it literally takes, with prep, 15 to 20 minutes, you know? Oh, just, Not everyone has Just like, the prep part you're saying? Or? No, the whole thing. If it's, if it's like short, thin hair, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take very long, you know, there's... Because usually most of the time is curling and prepping the head. So if there isn't much hair to curl, it really doesn't take very long. Um, so then that balances out with the bridesmaid that has really thick hair and wants Hollywood waves, you know. That'll take about 45 minutes. For like this half up, half down mm -hmm. dude, um, do you recommend extensions or any particular brands if you were? Yes, I always. Even if someone has like the thickest hair, extensions just really help hold it all day long because um, they don't they don't fall or drop and they act like a scaffold into your own hair mm. they like hold it all together um, so I I recommend Luxie hair they're the best I've ever I worked have? with yep. Yep. they're amazing they, and they give me a code for my brides too because I send everyone their way so actually kind of uh, I'm an ambassador for them now which is great um, drop the code girl yeah, right? <laughs> what is the code? it's LX Shannon Sara Okay, LX for Lux, but yeah, LX. LX and then a little dash, dash Shannon Sara. Shannon Sara. And you can get like uh, $20 off, which oh, is really I'm nice. Oh, I'm using that code. Yeah, it is. They are so, they're just like the best quality I've worked with. It feels like you're literally working on like someone's hair. Their, their, their color match is exact. I've never had a problem with their color match. See, that's good because I ordered, okay, I'm also a Luxie mm -hmm. fan. Mm -hmm. When I had my hair more of that auburn, the natural redhead mm -hmm. look, I had a pair of extensions. But now that I'm changing my hair back to my natural, mm -hmm. uh, one of the best things about Luxie is that you can order samples, mm -hmm. swatches, right before you buy the whole. Exactly, you don't have wet. to commit. Yeah, so I have two different swatches mm -hmm. that are being delivered to me, so I can decide on That's which is perfect. closest. Yep, that is perfect. Um, and they have so many shades to choose from too, mm -hmm. so they're always going to have something to accommodate everyone and then worst case you can all dye them you know yeah no that's the best part mm -hmm. so my next question is because I am very familiar with clip-in hair extensions mm -hmm. and after you know quite a few uses you're putting product in them mm -hmm. and everything you're, you gotta wash them or whatever mm -hmm. again 
Now, when on the wedding day, are you going to want a fresh pack, or do no, you not care? No. If you treat your hair extensions well, they should be lasting you years, like three, three or so solid good years before they start getting frazzled. Um, you just need to like mask, condition mask them, um, the way you would your own hair. Mm. Um, and no, no, not a fresh pack. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one of the important <clears throat> things as well is that when you are washing them not be like super rough so I fill up the sink with water and do like a few pumps of shampoo and I just swish them around just so um, you're not rubbing the hair because that hair doesn't grow back you know yeah so you're not creating like dead ends and stuff um so just sort of like you're throw like them around the them. water exactly okay. soaking them and then just rinsing them off and then you see all like the residue come off That's in the water Good tip. And then, um, how about the conditioning part? How are you handling that? I'll just like, I'll just put a bit on and work it up very, very softly. And then I'll do the same thing, just swish it around the water to get it off. Okay. Yeah. Just so you're not like, you know, like when you towel dry your hair and you're rubbing it, you just want to avoid that with extensions. And your own head if possible, but your own hair grows back, they don't. Yeah. I tend to, um, lay them like you know uh where you put like your hand towels mm -hmm. or whatever on mm -hmm. um that bar in your bathroom mm -hmm. i have a towel there and then i put the extensions brushed out on on top of it to dry okay yep that's perfect and yeah air drying them is is a good call as well yeah air drying mm -hmm. so preparing for hair what do you recommend you for your wedding day for the wedding day or trials if it's so, not the same most, if not all, um, stylists now require clean hair. So there is, there's an age-old myth that dirty hair is better, and it's not because when your hair is oily, no products can like penetrate your hair if it's oily, because oil is a barrier, so mm. it stops products from doing their job. So clean hair is best because, I mean, the product industry has come a long way. There's so many more products now than there used to be, which is probably why dirty hair did used to work better for people because they didn't have what we have now, you know? Mm. So clean hair always because it's better to work on like a clean canvas, right? And you don't want to do art on like a dirty canvas. I would say on the lead up, do like a nice conditioning mask, like once a week at least. Olaplex has some really good masks. They, they just leave your hair feeling so soft and hydrated. It's like moisturizing your skin, but you're doing it for your hair. Mm, once a week. Um, yeah, I would say once a week, once every two weeks if you want, if your hair doesn't tend to be as dry, but if you have dry hair, once a week is good. Not all the way up to the roots, because then it can leave your hair feeling a little Yeah, yeah, greasy, yeah only like really the end. Like the end and midline. Yeah, so just once a week condition, show up with clean and dry hair. Try to do like the, the recommended things, like not towel drying your hair, sleeping on a silk pillowcase is really actually sounds ridiculous but it really makes a difference the silk pillowcases yeah okay just they're just so soft and they create less breakage as you're moving around throughout the night okay sleeping. no towel dry and air dry as much as possible and heat protectant before you put heat on it okay yeah amazing so i washed my hair last night but it was late it was like 10 o'clock at night mm -hmm. and I used a low heat setting with a blow dryer mm -hmm. and just blow dried my bangs forward mm -hmm. so I had that forward look. Yep. Um, and then put my hair up in a high bun. I only did shampoo and conditioner. Should mm -hmm. I have done anything different? No, that's perfect. Um, blow drying is a good choice, especially if anyone has like naturally like frizzy hair. I even have it in my contract, like blow dry your hair the day before because it's gonna, just for longevity, of course I go over all the steps again to get the frizz out of the way um, and to keep the hair smooth, but if you blow dry it the day before, you're just adding hours onto how long it's gonna last. Mm. Um, just because it's reinforcing. The, the one thing some people get, can get confused about is like, they're like, oh, I'll wake up and like straighten my hair <laughs> before. Oh, no. And I'm like, no, not direct heat like that because then it's like, you're setting it like chemically to stay one way and then it's not gonna curl properly. Um, so don't like straighten it particularly, but blow drying it is a really good choice for the day before. Most people getting their trials done on any particular event, special occasions, or just random? Um, it's when we're able to work it out, sometimes people want to do it on like their, you know, their bridal shower day. But mm. the problem is, uh, 
a lot of those are on weekends when we're like fully booked for weddings so we yeah. can't always fit it in so most of my trials are just whatever aligns with my childcare. so that will usually be mondays and i'll just stack them like one after the other mm. um just to try and get everybody fit in because trials is actually one of the hardest parts at least on in my experience of just getting everyone fit in around work schedules around my kids schedules it's just like it can be a challenge but we always end up working it out and then if, if it really isn't like working a lot of people if someone really can't get off work they'll be like it's fine we'll just do it the morning of <laughs> we'll wow. just trust you for the day of and then it, it's it's always gone well if someone shows me a photo of like what they're looking for um we can get it done some people, everyone has different hair types, right? There's people that are mm -hmm. super thin and they get oily right. really, really quick. Mm -hmm. So that's a, I feel like that could be like a challenging hair type. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate something like that? I tell them to get extensions. <laughs> extensions. <laughs> yeah, and I'm always super real. If someone has like really fine hair and then they show me a photo where someone's wearing like 300 grams of extensions and they're like, can you do this? I'm like, no. We can't make it look like this. We can do it and it's going to look different because you don't have that fullness. And, you know, barely anyone has that fullness. It's mostly, info photos mostly always have extensions in. Like yeah. Like 90 percent of the time. So. Agreed. I just, you just have to be transparent. You know, there's no point in being like, yeah, I can do this. And then having someone be like less than happy with the turnout, you know. Yeah. And then people that get, I feel like extensions, people will be like, oh, but it, I still want to look like myself. They're so well done these days that you can't even tell. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very, very different than what they used to be. Even for um, updos, are you doing extensions? Sometimes, but not mostly. No. Not, yeah, because I feel like you I don't can't want like, get a in huge big bun, or you know, usually yeah. you'll want it to be really symmetric, like in to fit in the width of your neck is like a really flattering updo. So you don't want the shape to be like a big ball on the bottom of your head. Unless someone has literally two strands like me, <laughs> like two strands of hair, then I won't add extensions to an updo. Um, if they have like medium to fine hair, we most likely won't need it for an updo. Thank you. All these curves are turning out so pretty in your head. I'm so obsessed. That's one and a half barrel. Mm -hmm. So what's the best what's the best way of contacting you? How do you prefer clients to reach out to um, inquire or book? So for inquiries, it's through a website because that keeps everything super organized for me. Yeah. Um, and I used to when I was starting off, I used to like accept emails just to my email address or you know DMs. I would talk to people, but as time went on, it was starting to get disorganized and I was like afraid that I was missing something yeah like, I feel that really not like writing down a piece of information so the website is the only way and if someone dms me I'll say hey please go to the website I won't ignore them but I'll refer them on to how to do it in a way that I know I'm going to get back to them yeah so I'll do that and then our correspondence from there is through the website forms <laughs> just again so I don't miss anything and then I don't know if you're texting and stuff like my phone, a lot of even vendors like the venues are like, can we have your phone number? And I'm like, well, my phone tends to like block numbers that it doesn't know. Really? And so yeah, it started doing that. And I don't know if it's like a new setting and updated thing, which honestly is nice because I do get a lot of spam. So yeah. I just would prefer all email because I know that I'm on there at least every 48 hours and can, you know, get back to everyone efficiently. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Do you like getting photos, um, like inspiration shots or photos of the actual client's hair? Like how, how do you kind of navigate on what they're looking mm -hmm. for? So a lot of the time they will send me inspo in advance, which is fine by me. I don't really need to see it till the day of the trial. Okay. But if we aren't having a trial, I'll say, please send me a photo of your hair um, and send me a photo of what you're looking for. And that way I can see if you have not enough hair for what we're going for or if you're going to need extensions um so that's really the only time i'll ask for a photo of their hair um and a lot of the time people will like tell me their instagram and stuff anyway so you can have a peek if you really want yeah yeah okay so when it comes to the wedding day and you said you've worked with um 14 bridesmaids <laughs> or 14 kids yeah. at least before. it's not preferable but <laughs> no but you also had 8 a.m to 
like 3 p.m. Right, say. right. So that's a long time. Mm -hmm. So n you don't always get that. Um, so sometimes you're going to be like, okay, I need to hire mm -hmm. someone to do the bride, some bridesmaids, mm -hmm. and let me handle this. How are you finding, I guess, who do you, tr do you have like a team that you trust? Or so I don't, I don't have like a team that works for like Shannon, Sarah, bridal hair, but I have go-to people in the industry that I will ask if they're free. Um, and thankfully I have like a few really reliable ones that are mostly always available. Um, cause they still work maybe in a salon during the week and then their weekends are mostly free, but they are really good stylists that I trust. If worse comes to worse and someone isn't free, I'll just say we need to start earlier and I know I'll be able to get them done, so. Oh, there you yeah. go. You, you've mastered the updo, I think. <laughs> oh, um, so, I mean, there's awards, so definitely there's Thank you. proof. Um, but what what is the hairstyle you like to do most? So I honestly, like, might be a bored answer. I love to do anything romantic and whimsical so something that isn't like mathematical or calculated you know oh there's certain steps to this when someone shows me something and it has like wisps everywhere and it has texture I like just light up inside I love doing braids obviously they're like a, a whole thing now love a good braid um but I would say I get maybe most excited when someone shows me an updo yeah like a textured updo mm -hmm. Where do you get your inspiration from, do you think? Oh, good question. Um, when I first started out, I was just following a lot of like the big names on Instagram. You know, like um, like Cassia Fortuna has always been inspo. Like she still is. She is just something else. Um, I, I used to subscribe to her like monthly sort of teaching course, which helped me learn a lot. So I would say those two were like really big inspo. So much so that I like, you know, bought their stuff and really wanted to learn from them. So those two, and um, honestly, like seeing everyone's like stories at the weekend, like all the hairstylists that I follow, and I'm like, oh, that looks great. Like, you know, you just get inspired just by following their page and, and watching them like sort of hustle. And I'm like, oh, I'm not the only one that's waking up at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> to go do this wedding. You know, and I also love Ash and Co. Bridal hairs and Sarah W. Hair. There's so many of them, and the ones that I tend to gravitate towards are all like the romantic boho artists. Yeah. Do you get uh, um, brides asking for a second look, and do you stick around for that? I have done second looks in the past and they are like an add-on service. Would you recommend if they were going to do a second look, would you say let's start with a down look and then go into an updo or do you vice versa? Yeah, uh, so a down look and then an updo is so much easier to do because when you take down an updo it can be a rat's nest. Yeah. You know, like, But when you, I mean the down do means it's already prepped for an updo perfectly. Creating the timeline for your brides and bridal party, um, when they tell you how many people Yes, that's a good question because it's so different for makeup artists and hairstylists, even though it's like a similar industry to be in. So makeup artists always know like at least roughly how long it takes to do a face because you know everyone has eyes and nose and mouth. There's yeah. no like real variables there. But with hair there are so many variables, length, what style do you want, how much hair do you have, like thickness wise. Are we using extensions? Like there's so many things that make a style go from a half hour to an hour and 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't do time slots for a bride, for bridesmaids. I don't do time slots with names. I just work backwards to the average amount of time it takes me to do a bridesmaid, which can be like 35 minutes to 40 minutes. You're obviously not a makeup artist, mm -hmm. but you've worked with countless, <coughs> I'm sure, different mm -hmm. ones. Do you have recommendations on makeup artists that you work well with, that at least that run on time mm -hmm. or, you know, have done a good job? Yeah, of course. I It's funny, in the last year I started working with like, you start seeing people more often, you're like, oh hi, it's you again, and then it's nice because it's a nice like culture to work in when you've already worked together. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites is K. 
Casey Glamour, she does really beautiful. Oh, like, she does. Yeah, like I agree. Like, I just feel like everyone always looks super bridal, and like she has a very specific look that I can tell it's her work before I even see like her name on the post, That's funny. which is good. Um, I love uh, Gina Ritaco's work. She does beautiful work. Um, by Alyssa just is like she's oh, by something Alyssa's else. Too. Yeah, she she just makes people look like I don't know like their skin is like newborn, <laughs> like fresh little newborns. Um, fresh little newborns. Yeah. <laughs> um, as a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we are behind schedule mm -hmm. is because hair and makeup mm -hmm. run behind. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not typically, yeah, it's typically not fault. <laughs> their fault. Yeah. I've heard a lot of stories on what could happen on the morning of the wedding day where Bridesmaids aren't even awake, they haven't oh washed their gosh. face. They really they sometimes haven't. don't take it seriously enough. I'm like, do you understand that you're setting the whole day back and then I get a bit mad? Oh, <laughs> I don't always show them that I'm a bit mad, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is your, like, you're the maid of honor and you're, you were meant to be here an hour ago. Um, <laughs> but I make it, honestly, like, I started being a bit less of a pushover and a bit more of a hard ass about times. Just because you have to be. I'm like, look. If, if this person isn't here on time, I can't do their service because it's going to, I'm not responsible for your whole wedding day running behind, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because it's the morning and you're like, oh, we have hours before mm -hmm. our, our photographer arrives, or hours exactly. before the ceremony. I'm like, you don't realize we have to do four hours of photos before the ceremony, right? right. And it's like, exactly. Like, you guys have to be ready for mm -hmm. this. Yeah, I guess that is part of maybe their mindset. It's like, ah, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have time. And I did have a wedding, um, obviously not naming any names or even times, so no one knows who it's about, but I had a wedding uh, and the bride told me that the wedding photographer was coming around 2.45 slash 3 p.m. I literally have it in writing and I double checked it a million times. So I was like, okay, so we can start at this time. Photographer isn't coming until closer to three. The photographer shows up at 12.30. <gasps> And I was not done services, to say the least. And I felt so bad. The photographer was kind of just standing in the corner waiting for me to be done for like a long time. So I had to like then rush services. Um, Bright was quite nonchalant <laughs> about the whole thing. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So when I had a moment, I went to the photographer and I said, look, I was told, I was told I had to be done by 2.45 to 3. And that's, I'm sorry. And he was like, it, he was like, it happens. It's okay. We'll we'll cut corners somewhere else. Like, so then it's kind of like a detriment to your own wedding day if you do that because then something else is going to suffer. Oh you know? yeah, the photography, the qual like the photos that you've right, expected the, the from shots that you get paid so much money for uh -huh. this wedding. I'm talking to you, bride, watching this. <laughs> You're paying so much money. Yeah, for, as like, they are well aware of. Yeah, for the hair, for the makeup, mm -hmm. for the photography. And you just video. don't want to rush glam. Like, you oh. don't, you look at these photos for the rest just, of your life. Yeah, you just, you honestly want to take it seriously when they say time, like timeline, because mm -hmm. that matters. Because you only get this day once, and if you follow the timeline that they provide you, you'll be able to get the services that you you know, that you are, pay for. You pay for <laughs> and that you, you know, you, you dreamed of. Mm -hmm. Because once there's a delay with hair and makeup, even if there's it's 15 minutes, that cuts into 15 minutes possibility that you could be getting touch-ups before your oh, yeah. mm -hmm. ceremony because you've done photos, you know, right before your ceremony and you want touch-ups before everyone sees you walking down the mm -hmm. aisle. There's 15 minutes that could be used towards like having a moment sh um, with your parents or siblings mm -hmm. or whatever it is, but you cut into that time because you were 15 minutes behind schedule mm -hmm. on hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. This is your speaking honest. truth. Yeah, and and you know what the thing is too is that I've heard from other hair and makeup artists is that like bridesmaids literally they're they're knocking on the door the hair and makeup artists at the hotel room they're still sleeping mm -hmm. they have to wash their hair still mm -hmm. or wash their face from the night before they're hung over right whatever it is and and the bride for example she is texting on her phone mm -hmm. during the lamb and that and the people are asking her hey like 
where is this? What are we supposed to be doing? What time? And mm -hmm. she needs to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. She needs to not be on her phone or mm -hmm. interrupted. And My favorite is when they're like talking on the phone. I'm like working on the side of their head and their hand and their phone's right here. And I'm like, your ah. whole hand is about to get burned off by this 400 degree <laughs> turning iron, please. So I just, I'm like, can you switch ear? Can you switch ear? Yeah, see? <laughs> Trying yeah. to be nice about it. Yeah, and then that's, that's a really pleasant way of but, right. But it gives you a time to zen out when you're getting your hair and makeup just to be like, okay. Right, this is my day. Yeah. Um, and just make it like very serious, like these bridesmaids. And mother of the bride, mother of the groom, mm -hmm. grandparents, whoever else is getting hair and makeup done to mm -hmm. be there on their scheduled time. Exactly. Um, I, I can't stress it enough how many times as a photographer, how many times we've been delayed. Mm -hmm. I've actually gone to the point, because there's so many delays that's happened in the past, mm -hmm. I tell my brides, when, you're, when your hair and makeup artist asks what time you need to be ready, I know what time I'm starting with you for photos, but mm -hmm. tell them 30 minutes before that mm -hmm. time, just in Buffer case. Buffer time is always... Helpful. Yeah, yeah, and I'd prefer to know that and then use 20 of those 30 minutes and yeah. still be on time than like be like, oh yeah, I have till like 12 when really you're going to be done detail photos like right at 12. Or, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing with hair and makeup artists, they love content. They need the content. That's how you book them, right? right? Exactly. So yeah. they yeah. want to be able to take before and after mm -hmm. videos or photos or whatever mm -hmm. of you. So having that extra buffer time gives them that flexibility. Right, without stress. Yeah. yeah. So they're not being like, oh, this photographer is waiting on me mm -hmm. right now. I don't have the time to do it. I'll just use their pictures. Mm -hmm. But honestly, And that has happened before, like where I've gotten home and I'm like, I love that bride's hair and I didn't have like time to take a photo. It's, it's not worth the stress. I can see it in the eyes of the hair and makeup artist being like, I promise you I know, right, me. right, it, exactly, exactly. I'm not I would, I would go to say, like, mostly always, like, because hair and makeup artists are, like, the first vendors, you know, yeah. you're up bright and early, you're on, I don't, oh, I've never exhausted. been, like, late to a wedding, like, I, you know, as soon as you wake up, you're just go, 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 because you have to get there, like, sometimes at, like, five or six in the morning oh. to get everyone, like, glammed up, so it's, like, you're not going to risk being late and being that person usually there's just been like a miscommunication somewhere or someone has been hung over and late yeah. <laughs> for their appointment oh that's why on my, my contract God. also that has been helpful it says everyone must be there at the same time that morning so that i can move from one person to the next without delay in between yeah yeah so we we're not telling like aunt mary to get there at 11 30 in case i'm done all services by 11 and then i have to wait a half hour oh Do you have any other appointments today, or is it just yeah. a dress? Yeah, just the dr Well, I have a dress appointment, mm -hmm. hanging out with my cousin for lunch. Fun. Then going to another tailor appointment, because I'm going to a wedding in a couple weeks. So okay, I wanted nice. to tailor some dresses that mm -hmm. I have. Um, and then I'm seeing another friend. Oh, fun. And what one a one nice of my busy day. Yeah, and one of my favorite things I've been doing lately is Zumba classes. Oh, so I'm Zumba love. tonight. Love that. Yes. Well, that will be a good tester for the hair elastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could keep it in. Oh, my God. You're right. <laughs> I know today's a Tuesday, so mm -hmm. you, you were very flexible for me, so thank you for that. Yes, of course. Um, so typically Mondays, yes. My I used to do Tuesdays, but then my daughter started pre-K, and it was just with picking her up at all. It was like too, like too much to figure out. Um, thankfully, my husband was working home today, so I was able to make it work. But yeah, typically Mondays between like, between 11 and like 3, but I tend to not do more, trials are like a lot more of like an in-depth meeting and to like really get to know the bride and give them like a good quality like consult. So I only, I, yeah, I'll only aim, I'll do three tops. I want to hire you for my engagement shoot that is going to be most likely springtime. Okay. And most likely... April, May. Ooh. So we'll have to figure out know. where up. your availability is mm -hmm. there so I can plan my engagement shoot around that. Yeah, that would be so fun. I would love to do it. Yeah. Where are you going to do it? Um, probably going to be Liberty State Park. There's tons of Liberty cherry State blossoms Park there. Is so gorgeous. Yeah. And this is that's where we live and mm -hmm. just tells more of a story there. Mm -hmm. And I'm obsessed with the cherry blossoms. Mm -hmm. And it's very underrated. Like people 
tend to go to Branch Brook Park, which is very popular for mm -hmm. New Jersey. That's the one like in New York, right? Yeah. Okay. So who do you get, well, who does a photographer get to photograph their <laughs> <laughs> engagement and their wedding? That must be a tough choice. You know what? It is. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. I am not going to lie. It sounds it's... like it. It's like, you know so much about the topic, so you're like, who do I, who is the best fit here? Yeah. No, it, we we tried one out when we were in Punta Cana. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very confident the photos are going to look amazing. Mm -hmm. I strongly advise anybody that's looking for a wedding photographer, ask to see full galleries, like galleries they actually deliver to a client, not just their highlights, okay. not just like their best shot mm -hmm. you want to see what they actually sent from a full wedding day and if you okay. if they worked your venue please have them send you their ve the venue that you're mm -hmm. having your wedding. that's smart actually yeah the venue my big thing is i want to see how they shoot in scenarios that aren't always the most ideal for a mm -hmm. photographer so most photographers are going to show beautiful work of like outdoor lighting you know right and the most sunlight yes perfect perfect lighting but I want to see the worst lighting scenarios and how they shoot that mm -hmm. so when there's no windows in the room and it's just like a mixed lighting that's happening how are they handling and how are they shooting that are they controlling the light for that mm -hmm. and Let my other check. thing is perfect And also, how are they editing? They're like, hold up and just let me <laughs> shoot my own wedding. <laughs> okay, so do you want to see the front or back first? Um, front. Okay. Oh my god, Shannon! Literally, these curves on you are like <gasps> phenomenal. This is a one and a half barrel? Uh -huh. I'm obsessed. And it will fall a little bit, so it won't be like crazy round, but it won't fall too much. Oh my god, I just one thing for symmetry. Mm -hmm. This side just lifted up a little bit like this side. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! It literally looks so... I am obsessed. Oh. I am nearly ah, smiling. It's perfect! It literally it's looks so perfect. gorgeous. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. What do you think? Is it here? Yes, there. Yep. I need to keep my glasses on, sorry. Yeah. So gorgeous. Oh. Are you able to just edit out my ugly light okay. switch? Because this thing makes me so paranoid we haven't changed it yet. <laughs> <laughs>